Good morning, everyone. My name is Leanne Kunji, and I'm a programming associate here at TIFF. To begin, we would like to acknowledge that tonight's event is taking place on the treaty territory of, of the Mississaugas of New Credit and the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the Huron-Wendat. We are grateful to have the opportunity to work in the community. Six is eligible for the Girls People's Choice Award. Vote for your favorite films at tiff.net slash vote. We would like to thank Film Movement and Beta Cinema for providing us with this film. Thank you to German Films for their generous support. Wolfgang Fischer was born in Austria. He studied film at the Art Academy of Dusseldorf and at the Academy of Media Arts in Cologne. He has directed the short film Grau and feature film What You Don't See. Stix is his latest feature. Please help me in welcoming to the stage director Wolfgang Fischer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. It's really an honor and a pleasure for me. And I would like to thank you on behalf of my team for this wonderful occasion and for the honor to present our movie here. I don't want to talk too much in the beginning of the screening. I just want to let you know that the film you're going to see was 90% of it was entirely shot on open water. And we didn't use any effects. So everything is really you're going to see. And after the screening, I will be here. And if you've got any questions, please feel free and ask me. I'm looking very much forward to talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So yes, we will be having a Q&A after. Thank you. Enjoy the film. Hi. It gives me great pleasure to welcome back to the stage director of Stix, Wolfgang Fischer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for bringing your film to Toronto. We're so glad to be able to share it with the audience here. So to begin with questioning, um, where did the inspiration for this story come from? You know, this woman's long journey from, uh, from Gibraltar to Ascension Island. And uh, did you always set out to address the kind of Western indifference to the migrant crisis? Yeah, mainly it was to raise the question about existentialism and to raise the question, who are we? Who do we want to be and who do we have to be concerning this dilemma we have to face? And the second thought we had while we were writing the script, it's about migration. It will follow us the next decades and we wanted to make a movie and deal with it. And we have to face these problems nowadays. And that was the reason we started to work on Sticks. And it was nine years ago we started to work on the project, writing the script. and. It's still the situation in the ocean all around Europe. It's still the same. So from the beginning till now, around more than 20,000 people died in the ocean. And it's getting worse and worse and worse. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I think that's it. To be in the ocean and to kind of feel the atmosphere that uh, you create with this film and. Uh, between like Rika's physicality of dealing with the boat and then her confrontation of of the sinking ship, uh, kind of how did you arrive to the, the the style of presenting mm. these these kind of two mm. battles? So we wanted to get with the perspective with the perspective of our main character just to follow her all the time and to force ourselves in her situation and to raise the question. What would I do if I'm in this situation? And that was the main thought. And also to explore this archaic world. What does it mean being alone in this world? And you saw that Rike can manage it. She has her skills. But on the other side, there are people, they don't have this emergency safety issues and they are just on their own. And to show this contrast, that was the aim of Styx. And so let's talk about Susanna Wolf's uh, performance. Like it was incredible, the kind of strength that she showed to deal with the boat, and then also uh, just reading her her expression while she's going through this moral dilemma. So, uh, how did you come to cast Susanna, mm. and uh, did you discuss about uh, what did you discuss about mm. her character? So it was quite difficult to cast the main role for Styx. We did a big casting all over Europe. And then we found Susanne, she's more or less in theater, so she's a very physical actress. 
and she has a small license for sailing boats just to go on small lakes in the <laughs> surrounding of Berlin. <laughs> and then we had to train with her that she gets the skills that you really believe she's behind the steering wheel by herself. And all the people, all the extras you have seen in the movie, they are professionals. So they're professional rescue teams, they're professional helpers in the beginning when you saw the accident. And they're also professional soldiers in the end with the Coast Guard. So they are really out in rescue missions. And also the people on the other ship, these were human beings. They did the dangerous crossing over the ocean and we did interviews with them. We explored their world, we explored their feelings, their fear. And that was so helpful to build the story because we didn't want to manipulate it. We didn't want to, to uh, use cliches and it should be as realistic as possible. And that the film is a, creates a certain attitude that it's not just doing a movie, it's an attitude towards life. And we wanted to make a movie against fear and for humanity. I think you very much succeeded. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to open, a, open the questioning up to the audience now. In the corner here. Styx comes from the Greek mythology. It's the river of death. And it, it divides the region of the living and the death. And there's also the Chiron, the ferryman. You have to pay him that you can cross it. And I think the title fits perfectly for, for our story. And that's the reason why we choose it. Over here. Oh, so the question is, how did uh, do you film the storm scene? So it was everything was we filmed everything out in the open water. It's just two scenes when she tries to put down the, the sails and when she's hitting by the mast. That was shot in a tank in Malta. So there, there you have kind of uh, the possibility to produce with wave machines storms but that was just the, the two the two single scenes all the other scenes you've seen when the boat is disappearing between the waves that was everything in real yes in red So uh, I'll just repeat the question. So the question is, uh, what was the reason for choosing a female protagonist for this story? I liked it very much to show a strong woman that she's able to deal with this archaic world. And that was my main approach also to the project. Uh, we always had a strong woman in mind and also to have the contrast between the woman and also between the young boy of the female part and the male part. And it's also this kind of contrast I was interested in. And then it's not this strong man who knows everything. And suddenly you find yourself facing this woman and she knows how to deal with this world and she's a professional helper. And then she's in this dilemma where she's she has no choice anymore. And it's this double bind situation we wanted to show and that functions perfectly for me with a woman, with a male, female character. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, no. uh, has this film been shown in Europe and has it uh, had a positive response? You know, there's so much in favor of your chancellor. And uh, yet when we meet Germany, mm. oh, it's just more popular outside than inside. So I just wonder what kind of change. No, uh, no it's very. It was really a lot of discussion after the movies. There were many screenings and the day after tomorrow we have our theatrical release in Germany. And we are also nominated for the so-called Lux Prize by the European Parliament. We are under the finalists, the three finalists, and they will build a cinema in Strasbourg in the parliament. And all the members of the parliament, the European Parliament, are going to watch this movie. So. You can see film can be a very powerful force because now we lead this discussion where this problem maybe can be solved. And that's the reason why I'm very happy and very glad that we have this opportunity to approach the members of parliament of the European Union. Thank you. Any more questions? Yeah, okay. Oh. It's both. So because the clothes 
mainly or that try to close the Mediterranean Ocean, that nobody can escape from there anymore. And now people start to leave from the west coast of Africa in order to go to the Canary Islands. And some boats try to manage to go to Brazil. So there were three weeks on the Atlantic Ocean and they managed. And it's really insane what's going on. And it's the kind of, it's so-called Frontex. It's the border control from the European Union. And they have boats, they have army boats on the west coast. They, are, they, they sit in, in, in Mauritania and Senegal. And it's really weird that we as the European Union control international seas on the west coast of Africa. It's the Maltese Coast Guard, and uh, the Coast Guard is actually, they do rescue missions, and we talk to them, and they want to help. They don't say, no, I don't, we don't care, but they need green light from the government, and they need green light from the European Union, and they just wait. And these are these poor people are also in the front row, and they are traumatized. They have really, they made... They had crazy experiences in order to, I mean, in the helping of these poor people. And that was quite challenging to work with them. Mm -hmm. I guess over here. So the question is, uh, if it's typical for commercial companies to have policy not to help people on the sea. So we did a lot of research with sticks and we were talking to these kind of companies and also with NGOs. And nowadays, if you have the professional ships like the tank ships, they got kind of information that there is a danger zone. Please avoid it. It's called danger zone. And, and there were also uh, stories we heard from companies that because they're so much under pressure, they can't stop because they have to make their deals and also they are not equipped. The, the big tank ships, they have no equipment in order to, to lead a rescue mission. And that's a little bit insane what's going on. Okay, yes, over here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and I think especially uh, you, when you were saying about it being just reality, you, d you didn't use any music throughout the film. It's all just the waves and that kind of silence and her thoughts. Um, but there is, in the beginning, you have uh, the, the kind of guitar mm -hmm. section. So what was that? What was the decision mm -hmm. to include it at the beginning? I like that it's you start with music in the beginning and in the end. Mm -hmm. So it puts the thing a little bit together. And also with the apes in the beginning, in Gibraltar, and there's this big myth about these apes. So if they are disappearing, Gibraltar will go to Spain and won't remain to the to the British. Uh, yeah. And um, it was very complicated to shoot these apes because normally they are just on the hills and they don't go in town. And it's it was also we had to lead many discussions because there's a ministry for these apes in Gibraltar. <laughs> if you hit one ape, it's worse if you hit a human being. The fine, it's, <gasps> it's really incredible. <laughs> and so we were also followed by, by people and they observed us what we're doing with the apes because they're <laughs> wild animals. You can't tame them and you can't feed them and let's go, let's put some food there and they will run after us. So we had to wait like for four or five days and to observe the apes. And then we found out it was Sunday and nobody took the garbage away. And suddenly they come, came down <laughs> in town in the morning and we just followed them and observed them. And it was really brilliant to see and brilliant to watch. Incredible. I think you had a question over here, yes.
Well, I don't think so because I wanted to show somebody who is really willing and it's not like the one, oh, he has to be thankful and grateful, he's saved. Okay, we can treat him, we can feed him a little bit and the problem is solved, but there he also has a strong will and in order to show this, this was also important for us to show a human being with a strong will and he has the other people on the other boat and he feels respons responsible for them. And it's not just helping one single person, we have to save all of them. Ah, yeah, that's a good question because uh, uh, because the main approach was to to work with people who are really professional in their helping situation and the Coast Guard, and then we wanted to have a boy who knows Africa. And then a friend of mine, the director, Tom Tikwa, he has a school in Nairobi, in the slums of Nairobi, which is called One Fine Day, and in these schools, children can explore their creativity. So we went to Nairobi and did the casting there and then we found Gideon and I have to thank him so much for his courage, for his strong will to make this incredible journey with us because he has never been on a plane, he didn't know how to swim, so he had to train to swim in the pools of Nairobi and we did this wonderful journey with him and for all our team to get to know him and to get to know his stories, that was a challenging process for all of us. Um, did you want to talk a little bit about your team and filming uh, on the open seas? How did that work? <laughs> yeah. Actually, I have, to, I, have to, I have to admit, I didn't know anything about sailing. So <laughs> I started with my DOP, Benedict Neunfels, on a small lake in these small boats, and we did a kind of sailing course. And <laughs> then we found ourselves on Malta with Wind Force 8, Force 9. It was really a crazy journey, and we had to become pros on every level. And what does it mean to, to shoot on open water? All my director's colleagues, leave it. It's impossible. <laughs> Stop it. And I thought also in the first week, it's, it's not possible to do this. But then you have to follow. You have to keep, the, keep on going with the ocean. The ocean tells you what you can do and what you can't do. And also my director assistant, he had to make 40... Uh, shooting schedules. Every day we had to change it because we stick so much to the script. It was very strict. Everything was written in the script, even the bird, which <laughs> is landing on the boat. It was written in the script. And then lucky us, it was just one day this bird appeared. And <laughs> was really, I was so amazed by this situation. And that was quite complicated sitting 45 days on an 11 meter yacht with 10 people. There's no intimacy. And I have to apologize also for my team because half of the team became seasick. And it was <laughs> just sometimes really a nightmare <laughs> because you can't leave the boat. And we wanted to, to go on long journeys and we wanted to explore this world, also the change in color, the change in weather. And it was important to follow this journey, all of us together. Oh, yes, we're here. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So the question is uh, about the birds and the apes and uh, about Ascension Island and, and that journey there, choosing yeah. Darwin. Ascension Island, it's really an, a, a special island because in former times, it was a volcano islands. There were rats, there were nothing else there. And then Charles Darwin came in the, he, he made an experiment. He collected plants from all over the world and he planted them on an ascension island. There are plants growing side by side and that's not the normal situation. And I like this thought so much, um, this, uh, that you, you Im immigrate plants and the, they grow there and there's climate, there's rain now and it's a tropical jungle in, and it's, it's really amazing. And it's based now for all this biosphere experience, like traveling to Mars and it's really a special thing. And I was talking to so many sailor and I asked them, what's the most beautiful thing during your journey? And they, they said to me, the best thing is after three weeks out on the open water, the best thing is to see green again. Mm 
all the shades of green. And that was kind of an amazing image. I, I like, I wanted to have it also in the, in the picture. Lovely. Okay. Oh, one more. I'll give you the last one. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, okay. The question is, uh, when you were out on the sea for 45 days, if you encountered any refugee boats? No, we didn't. But our base, the harbor on Malta, there were all these NGO ships and they went out every day in order to, to rescue people. And it was a bizarre moment for us that we shoot this movie on the one hand and on the other hand, these people try to save human beings. Okay, I think that's it for, for time that we have thank now. You but so thank much. you so You're much. You're a wonderful audience. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, this is eligible for the Grolsch People's Choice Award, so please don't forget to vote. Thank you. And if you've got questions, I will be outside and feel free to ask me. <laughs>